Hello everyone. Before I bring Elise up to kick things off, I just wanted to give a quick technical intro on Shindig here. Um, this is an interactive platform and there will be a Q&A portion of tonight's event where you can ask your question via video like I am right now or you can ask it via text. So if you'd like to ask your question via video, you can click the raise hand button in the bottom right hand corner. If you'd like to ask it via text, you can click the ask a question button. Also, if you'd like to activate your camera, you can roll over the settings, uh, or roll over your image in the bottom right hand corner, click the settings button, and choose the right camera and microphone. Also, feel free to share on social media and uh, that widget over there to the right uh, that, that says uh, blog curve 13, that is a clickable image, so if you're interested in checking out uh, more about the conference details, you can click there. So, uh, without further de uh, delay, I'll bring up uh, the co-founder and chairman, Elisa. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Elisa Camelhort page and I'm the co-founder and COO of Blogger. And thank you so much for joining me today. Um, and thank you to Shindig for hosting us. And I think this is a super interesting platform that I've never used before. So kind of see how it all works out. Um, so Blogger, for those of you who don't know, is the largest community and network of women social media users. And my two co-founders, Lisa Stone and Jory Desjardins, and I founded it back in 2005. We do three things. We started as a conference, which a lot of people don't know. We actually started our, our first initiative with Blogger 05. And from there, after the conference, we launched both blogger.com, which is our online community and news service all about what women are saying uh, in social media and our influencer network where we help bloggers and other users monetize their online platforms. But the annual conference is really our baby and this is our ninth annual conference which I try not to think too deeply about because that's a lot of <laughs> that's a lot of years have gone by. But this year it's going to be bigger and better than ever and uh, I wanted to tell you a little bit about it and then answer some questions. So Blogger has now expanded uh, essentially to a three-day event, Thursday, July 25th through Saturday, July 27th in Chicago this year for the third time that we've been to Chicago. And there's really four things that go on at Blogger. There's learning, uh, over, uh, 14 tracks of programming throughout the days. There's connection, and this can mean both professionally based networking, but also just connection with the other people you've been talking to online all year long. And be your one opportunity to either meet them in person or to reunion with them every year. Um, there's advancement, and by what that I mean is that connections get made that turn into actual advancement. There are book deals that have been struck at Blogger. Uh, businesses get formed by people who meet at Blogger, um, and relationships get forged. Uh, professional relationships get forged between bloggers and brands. And finally, there's fun. There's a lot of different activities that are really just about having a great time. Now, I would be remiss if I didn't start by saying that um, we have always wanted Blogger to be as accessible as possible. Uh, although if you haven't bought your ticket yet and you go look, the prices are higher now. Our early bird pricing is still the same $99 a day that it was in 2005. So if you if you didn't buy during early bird this year, this is just a note to self that um, you know, next year you should try and make it make an effort. It's the most affordable uh, conference you'll find, I think. This is made only made possible by our sponsors, and we will have more than 100 sponsors, ranging from nonprofits and startups who are in our tech pavilion of kiosks to our lead sponsors such as Dodge, Folgers, Samsung, Ulta, and White Cloud. Uh, sponsors not only help us keep the ticket prices low, but they afford us to be able to feed you all day and to deliver all sorts of experiences from the Best Buy 5K that we just announced yesterday, in case you missed it, and it, it is limited capacity, so go check it out, or the Recharge Lounge that will be available um, from Folgers to help you recharge your devices and yourself. So I really want to give a shout out to the companies that support every woman who blogs and every woman in the blogger community, regardless of their blog, regardless of their subject matter. Their support of the official conference is what makes this possible and makes it possible for the thousands of us who want to come, come, be together, and actually have it be as accessible as possible. 
as I said, the conference is now three days long. The Thursday now has three pre-conference additional days you can sign up for. Um, and many of these, they, you know, our programming really stems from what we hear from the community. Healthminder Day actually grew out of a special needs mini-con that was organized by blogger Julia Roberts in 2011 for the first time. And she, you know, thought that they'll need special needs parents to get together. And we found space and a time and, and sort of let her have at it. And it was so enthusiastically received that we decided to expand it into an entire Healthminder Day, which is uh, for both for special needs parenting and caregiving bloggers, but also fitness and nutrition bloggers, and also health and self-care bloggers. So basically people from the medical side of the exam room table and the patients themselves. Um, we're really excited that the opening keynote for Healthminder Day, which will be open to all pre-conference day attendees, is Secretary of Health and Human Services, Kathleen Sibelius. So she'll be there on hand and, and whether you're um, a business person, an individual, an employee or an employer uh, or an independent contractor, uh, healthcare and health costs, we know are a huge concern for most of the women in our community. So it's a great opportunity to get, um, to get in front of her and hear what she has to say and ask questions as well. We also have Pathfinder Day, which is a very intensive workshop about using your blog as a path to um, really that advancement I was talking about. So whether you want your blog to be your business, you want to get a book deal, or you want to change the world, uh, Pathfinder Day is sort of designed to put you on that path. And we have a real diversity of bloggers acting as our peers who have been down this path um, and are there to help sort of give you their personal experience of when there were key milestones and the decisions they needed to make. So, you know, we have beauty beauty bloggers represented by Leanne Farbs. Uh, we have vegan cookbook author Hannah Kaminsky, who has uh, done both traditional publishing, but also eBooks and other really interesting things that she's doing. Uh, we have postpartum uh, depression warrior, Catherine Stone and the change agent path. Um, so we have a, a great diversity of women who have been down a path that we know a lot of folks want to follow. And finally, this year we've added Viewfinder Day, which is all video and photography. We all know it's becoming more of an image driven web. And uh, I know that um, I never considered myself a photographer and yet I'm constantly posting pictures and constantly bemoaning, uh, wishing I could be a lot better at it. So um, Viewfinder Day is again, an intensive day focused on video and photography. It'll kick off with uh, a really uh, meaningful keynote from Todd and Diane from White on Rice Couple. Um, and they, if you've never seen them speak before, they, they really know how to give you great information and somehow like leave you weeping at the end. Um, and we're going to talk about how to achieve your voice, your voice and photography, but also your voice when you're, if you want to become a video blogger, you know, how to establish, well, what part of your voice are you going to translate into video? But then a lot of the day is going to be getting up and doing it, getting up and taking shots, making clips, and then editing them in real time and then presenting them out to the group and kind of talking about the process of going from your initial raw footage or shots to the final product. Um, so that's all just happening on Thursday, capped off with the official kickoff of our conference, which is the evening at the expo, uh, where we get to uh, meet all of our sponsors and see what they're, they're bringing to the table in the expo hall. Um, and the there on the concourse where we have a lot of great stuff planned. When we go into Friday and Saturday, that's where we have those 14 tracks of programming, something for everyone um, from the blogger thinking of running for office, and you should think about it. Each and every one of you should think about it, even like your local school bar board, uh, local county supervisors, that is where it starts. That is the pipeline for getting more women into all office. So that's my little uh, side plug for, for that. Um, so from the blogger thinking of running for office to the blogger trying to make a living to the blogger whose blog is carrying her through just intense life issues and needs support and connection. We also have our, speaking of intense life issues, our fifth year of bringing international activists to the conference through our scholarship program. And these are women who risk their lives to blog. We have activists where we need to not allow photography and video um, because you know, they can't, they can't, their real identity can't be shared. Uh, this year we have women from representing India, Pakistan, uh, China, and the African diaspora all represented. 
And I should mention that our, our international activists from China, we've actually tried to get her to the conference two previous times, and she was under house arrest and unable to come for that reason. And this is the year she finally was allowed to move to Hong Kong, and now she finally has gotten a visa and is able to travel. So we're really thrilled to have her third time to charm and to get her uh, to share her work. Uh, even when her own countrymen couldn't read her blog uh, in China, she was getting the word out uh, through the use of Blogger. Um, interspersed in all of that goodness and all of those different tracks at different skill levels, we have amazing keynotes. And this year we kick off with the pioneer woman, Reed Drummond, a true blogger turned media empire story. Um, Guy Kawasaki, who is all about helping you get your work published and, and the value of self-publishing, which he's become a, a huge uh, advocate for author as entrepreneur. Um, Saturday kicks off with Sheryl Sandberg. So she's obviously the COO of Facebook, but also the author of the number one bestseller, Lean In. There is a lot to talk about uh, with Cheryl, so we're thrilled to have her. And after her keynote, they will do a Lean In circle um, and sort of show you what that's like for those of you who are interested. Our lunch keynote on Saturday is something we're calling Makers and Creators. And it's like the next generation of independent um, makers and creators who are collaborating with big business and collaborating with people but still keeping their independent spirit. And that includes uh, MacArthur Genius Grant recipient Majora Carter, um, Lisa Donovan, one of the co-founders of Maker Studios, one of the largest YouTube content providers, uh, Britt Morin, who is sort of, uh, people call her the digital Martha Stewart, although as you, as you know, if you saw uh, Martha keynote last year, she Martha's kind of the digital Martha Stewart. Uh, so I got to give her props for that. And Randy Zuckerberg who uh, obviously was in, in the early days of Facebook and all of its marketing, but now is out on her own and doing some really interesting things. And our closing keynote on Saturday is Gail Ann Hurd, um, the producer, um, of, producer and writer of Terminator and Aliens, but now the producer of The Walking Dead. So this is a woman who has brought strong women characters to the screen. Of course, our, one of our centerpieces of the conference is the community keynote, which closes out Friday. We honor 100 voices of the year, and 12 of them get up and share their work live. Um, and, you know, when people say, uh, you'll laugh, you'll cry, you'll, you'll hurt, well, I think maybe only Wayne and Garth say that, but I'm dating myself, and I still totally love that reference. Um, you will. It's, an, it's just, um, it reminds us why we're all, why most of us started blogging which was about self-expression and why most of us keep blogging. Um, and we will have back our second annual fashion show with uh, representing the diversity and the full beauty of the blogger community. And as some of you may know, who you, if you've attended before, we have a somewhat unique approach to networking and fun from you know definite networking activities like the newbie breakfast, for those of you who've never attended before, to the speed dating that we're gonna kick off with Ree on Friday morning. But of course, also our nightly parties, open to any blogger attendee and ranging from the very big gala Voices of the Year reception and fashion show after party to a slew of parties that are designed for all the different tribes of blogger to, to get to connect with one another, but also to visit other tribes um, and sort of, you know, intermingle and, and find each other in smaller groups. Um, you know, not to mention there'll be karaoke, dancing, and even crafting going on at some of these parties. So we really, again, try to, uh, Blogger is the community for all um, of the bloggers, all the social media influencers. Doesn't matter what your topic is. Doesn't matter what size your blog is. Doesn't matter if, what you want to do with your blog or if you even don't know yet what you want to do with your blog. In fact, if you're not blogging yet, because uh, some percentage of our attendees are there to just figure out and get started. And that's why we have some beginning tracks for those folks. So that's that's what's going on at Blogger. There's learning, there's connection, there's advancing, and there's fun. And uh, those were really the prepared remarks that uh, I wanted to share with you to give you a sense of the scope of Blogger. And I am totally open for questions. And I hope I didn't speak too long. No, that was great. Thank you. Um, and we have a lot of text questions rolling in here. I want to remind everyone that they can video questions too. Uh, and to do so, 
uh, you can click the raise hand button. So be brave uh, and come up and ask your question via video. But in the meantime, let's go to yeah, exactly. I, I, let's go to some text questions while we're waiting for a brave soul to, to come up and ask a video question. Um, so Shelly is wondering, will there be a swag room this year? Oh, thank you for bringing that up, Shelly, because that's something we do that I think uh, that I'm really proud of. Um, we have what's called a swag exchange suite. It started a few years ago. It's a room where you can come and if you got something, whether you picked it up in the expo hall and then reconsidered or you got it in your tote bag and you don't want it, rather than throwing it away or leaving it in your room uh, for housekeeping to clean up, there's a swag exchange room where you can come and it's organized and it's staffed and you can not only drop things off there, you can pick things up. So if you got something you really like and you wish you had three or four of them, you can come get them. Um, and then at the end of the conference, if you don't know, we actually work with local organizations to have a destination for the stuff that was never, um, never picked up. So sometimes it's women's shelters, you know, it can be children's hospitals, but we find a destination for, we work with our venue to find a destination for the leftovers. So thanks for asking. All right, we have a couple people with their hands raised. Uh, and so the first up in the queue is Jen. So Jen, I'm going to bring you right up. Hey there. Hopefully Hi. this works. I'm. It's good to see you. I have an official question, and it is, as we can see, we're trying okay. something new tech-wise. Um, what um, fun spot do you for for connecting is Google Plus a good spot? Where where is Blogger trying something new for connecting with people during the conference? Oh, that's interesting. So um, so there's a lot of things we do during the conference. One of the most important things we're doing during the conference is the mobile app. Over the last year or two, we've really um, the mobile app, and so there's a photo gallery now in the mobile app, so you can be sharing your photos of the conference. There's, um, you can connect with friends through the mobile app. So, you, you know, it is a big event. So a lot of times people say, if you're counting on running into someone, you know, good luck with that. So by using the mobile app, you can actually exchange contact information and therefore be more likely to be able to text each other or call each other. So I think the mobile app is a big deal and very, very helpful. Um, we're using every social tool um, Blogger does, and we are reviving the Blogger at home uh, Twitter uh, handle um, for the length of the conference as well. Twitter is probably the place where we have the most staff watching the most carefully um, what's going on because it's so in real time and you can really go back and forth in real time. And it's, it's where our community is probably the most uh, penetrated is in Twitter. So that's where sort of a lot of real time customers will be happening. And then of course we'll have our live blog going up um we've really gotten that down to where they're going up same day so with so many tracks going on at once this gives you an opportunity to kind of check out what's happening in the other rooms and uh, i guess figure out what you uh, are missing but uh, the live blogs have gotten much quicker and much more um regular about getting up right uh, not quite in real time uh but on the same day for sure i hope that answers your question awesome thanks great seeing you All right, so thanks so much, Jen. Uh, and Sandra is next up with her hand raised, so I'm going to go ahead and bring her up. This is so fun. Hi. Hey, Sandra, I think you may not have mic activated. So if you go down um, and scroll over your image in the bottom right there uh, and click the settings button, choose the, your camera, and then choose the mic option. Uh, and this goes for everyone uh, going up and down. So that means that your mic is picking it up once you get to that setting. So go ahead and click the one where you're registering. Uh, before we go to the next uh, raised hand, let's go to back to the, the um, text questions here. Uh, and so Emma wants to know uh, about Writing Lab slash Geek Lab. Are these happening this year? Last year, regist 
registration was a little rough and it was going to be different this year, but we haven't seen it yet. Oh, what a coincidence. I think Shannon's working on the announcement post for today, actually. Um, yeah, we're going to do it a little differently. What's happened the last couple of years, for those of you who don't know, Writing Lab and Geek Bar are, are um, hands-on, one-on-one. We get some experts lined up, and they're small groups, and it's really about doing things in person and working on things together. And it actually really started in 2008, where and it was much more about sort of unorgan. you know, it was just here's a room where y'all can help each other hack some solutions or troubleshoot some problems you're having. And we've gotten a little more organized over the last few years by adding specific experts about specific topics. The last couple of years, we tried, because the event had gotten quite big, we tried to set up appointments beforehand and kind of accommodate for appointments, but walk-ins, but and trying to manage that got really chaotic. Uh, and I think because it's just very hard, uh, people sign up for a lot of stuff. I think it's very hard to have a really rigid um, appointment schedule in that context. So we're getting rid of that. And we're getting rid of sort of prescribed um, some of the, the, the brevity of the period of time for each expert and the prescribed kind of uh, chunks of time. And there will be traffic cops in the writing lab and the geek bar and the experts will be there for longer chunks of time and they will repeat each day. So each expert will come on Friday and come on Saturday, Friday morning, Friday afternoon, or Friday afternoon and Saturday morning. So kind of to accommodate for when you feel like thinking about um, the topic at hand. And it'll be um, more of an open forum for people to come in. Um, it did not work trying to have appointments, see who didn't show up, slot in other people. It, it'll just be like all of our other programming, which frankly is all first come, first serve. Um, that's what will happen with these as well. And the announcement post, and Shannon will probably, uh, Shannon Carroll, our programming manager, will probably articulate this in a more specific detail than I just did. Um, and I know her post is in draft right now, and we're just cleaning it up and announcing it. From the messages I'm getting back here, it seems like people are really excited about that and also uh, the swag room. Uh, so we'll go uh, to the next raise hand here, which is uh, Joanna or Johanna. Uh, I apologize if I'm pronouncing that wrong, but I'm going to go ahead and bring you up. Apparently, it's me. Can you hear me, Lisa? Oh, yes, I can hear you. Hi. Hi, honey. <laughs> um, I have just a one question. I have been going since 2008, and I think 750 people at my first conference. How many will be there this year? Did you say how many will be there this year? Yeah, I'm just curious. Yeah, I mean, we are expecting uh, the last few years we've had between four and 5,000, uh, and we expect it to be about the same size this year. Um, last year, um, for those of you who experienced it last year and um, felt it was uh, a little overcrowded, we agree. Um, we sign our contracts for venues sometimes 12 to 18 months out. So, um, so we were, were, you know, in that hotel venue uh, that was decided quite some time ago. Um, we are back to a situation we have a little bit more capacious venue in the McCormick Place. And so even though it's going to be a similar quantity of people, it's not going to feel um, the same way that the Hilton did. It's going to feel more like San Diego, those of you who went where there was really room and space and breathing room. Uh, I would just like to say that I I am a, an introvert myself who doesn't like large crowds. I'm also very short, so I get quite claustrophobic. So I completely feel you for those of you who get that, you know, feel a little overwhelmed by um, the crowds. And we're just never going to be in that situation again because now at this point we understand the kind of venues that we need to secure. So I hope that that's good news for everybody. Um, and, and also, we'll I think that. in my memory, the, the Sheraton has a lot of places for people to congregate. 
like there's a lot of places for you to sit and get a chance to just run into people. And that's one of the things I loved about that hotel. The lobby at the Sheraton is, yes, it's got couches and roundabouts and like nooks and crannies. Um, it's got a lot of great places for people to connect. It's also got its own like little coffee bar. It's got, you know, it, it, but also the McCormick place where the stuff during the day, you know, between eight in the morning to 4 p.m. is going to be happening. Um, that's also got a lot like the, the space where some of the more intimate tracks like the writing lab and the politics track and the interest and identity track. There's nooks and crannies up there too, little seating areas and window seats. Um, and there'll be various seating areas around the conference. So I think the Hilton's lobby, you know, doesn't have, we even, I remember we even said, well, couldn't you move just for us? Couldn't you move a bunch of couches in there? Which they didn't want to, but which is why they opened up that downstairs bar to our community um, and had it kind of open the whole few days because they knew they were lacking that but it was a little you know, it was a little off the beaten path you had to know that was really there to go find it so the Sheraton is quite I have no different. idea <laughs> yeah so the the Sheraton is quite different and has tons of seating and uh McCorm McCormick Place has various nooks as well so Yay. All right, so I have a couple questions here about the official hashtag. So is it blog her or blog her 13? For the conference itself, it's blog her 13. Um, people use blog her in general, or they use at blog her because that's, that's our team's blog her, mostly led by Momo, aka Diane Lang, who's our social media manager. But for the conference, it's blog her 13. Great, thank you, uh, Sammy. So uh, we have some questions coming in here um, about the uh, activists from China, um, which is really fantastic that uh, she's going to be able to make it uh, to the conference. What is she going to be covering in her talk? So the International Activists Panel um, allows each, uh, is moderated by Cheryl Conti. For those of you who don't know her, she's the Jill from Jack and Jill Politics, a really long time famous political blog that she runs with Baratunde Thurston. Um, she's also, her company is Fish and Strategy, and she's all about helping nonprofits um, and social good companies uh, get their word out. So she's very immersed in activism and politics, and um, she's been moderating. We've had her, it's one of the few cases where we've had her as the consistent moderator for this panel for several years now. Um, the women, you know, basically they talk about their uh, what they what they're doing with their blog or socials, um, what their obstacles were, what they're trying to raise awareness and consciousness about, what the ramifications have been, and I think what's really important to note is how we can help. Um, you know, it's it's very it's sort of interesting and and emotional to hear from women. Uh, for for most of us, uh, our blogs and social tools are a privilege we take for granted. Um, for these women, it's, it's, they take their life in their hands, uh, some of them, with, with what they blog about. Um, and they do it to try and really change the world in, a, in, in some very tough circumstances. And I think what's most important is for us to know, well, what can we do about that? I mean, what we could do um, for Jinyan uh, Zhang when she was, you know, blogging, but couldn't read her own blog, but could just send the messages out you know, is that it could make it so that people were not forgetting that she and her husband, who was also, he was, she was under house arrest, he was jailed. Um, you know, they were not forgotten, that, that what was happening was not being forgotten, that there was, you know, her blog, in my opinion, kept sort of an ongoing stream. She was covered in, in Huffington Post, she was covered, uh, I think it was Forbes. Um, just so people know what's going on and what they can do to help. And, and so that's what that panel is really about, not only understanding what their work is and why they do it and how social tools create an avenue for sharing that work that before, create a mechanism for getting that word out and raising that consciousness and, and staying in the public consciousness that didn't exist before, but it's also a way to say, Here's how you can help. 
for the activists because we, they can, we pay for their travel to come over. They actually also find that, you know, part of the criteria when people are submitting is we ask them how they think going to blog for would help them do their work and help them go back to their home and do a more effective job. So for the activists, a lot of it is about not making the connections, but also um, you know, they don't have blogging conferences. They can go learn about SEO or they can go learn about HTML or they can go learn about any, any of these tactics or tools. So it's a great opportunity for them as well to strengthen their skills and send them back with more skills and more uh, ability to, to keep getting their word out. And if you go to app blogger, I think I'll change the, just share the link to the international activist announcement so you can see who they are and, and see how much I, I butchered um, her name. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. Updates uh, happening as we speak. Um, so we have a, a, a good line queuing up of raise their hands. So uh, Brandy is next, and then after Brandy is Stacy. And just so everyone who's, who wants to ask a question via video knows, before you raise your hand, just go ahead and click the settings um, button and scroll through and make sure your mic is activated uh, so when you get up here you're ready to uh, talk. Uh, and to do that, click on settings, choose your video feed, and then choose the mic uh, option where you see the green bar going up and down. All right, Brandy, you're coming right up. Hi. Hi, Brandy. Um, I have a question about the app. So I use apps a lot at home when I'm sitting down, so it's hard for me to use on the go. Can you give some tips on how to best utilize the BlogCur app while we're at the conference? Oh yeah, thanks for asking. So while you're at the conference, I think there's several, the most used portion of the app, uh, I think is clearly the schedule. The fact that you can look at the agenda and mark the ones that you want to attend and therefore keep your schedule. Because there is some going on, it's just sometimes hard and you realize all of a sudden that you want it to be here and you're over on the other side of the, you know, the, the conference space helps you keep track. I do think that's one of the most used um, portions. Um, the other things that you can do, you can take notes within the app, you can take pictures and post them, as I said. You can, um, uh, I think, uh, track the Twitter feed from within the app uh, and track, uh, so track what's what's happening and see if there's any announcements going on that, that you're interested in. We can also push alerts uh, to you to remind people about, you know, important things happening. Um, the other thing is that people use it to, to sort of, there. it's an opportunity to get your own profile in there now, um, check out, uh, peruse the speaker list, peruse the attendee list, peruse the sponsor list, and sort of, again, predetermine, favorite the ones that you know that you want, the people you want to meet, or the sponsors you want to make sure to visit, or the sessions you want to make sure um, to attend. We also have, um, and we're trying to shift to allowing people to rate sessions in, in the app right after the session ends because we do send conference surveys and always have, but you, you, it's just really hard sometimes for people to keep track. Which one was that and which speaker was that? And, you know, they're not in the room anymore. Or maybe they're, they've been home for three days and um, they're finally catching up on their sleep. So sometimes it's not that easy to take the survey at the end and we just, Kind of find response rates are, are fine, but we would love to get more. So you can actually rate sessions and speakers in the app, um, which is really helpful for us and helpful for planning and helpful for improving things, always improving things for future years. So I think that's some of the, um, um, the key ways that people do use the app in real time to sort of keep track of their schedule, but also see what's going on. Hello. Hi, I've been so excited about this for weeks and months now, and I just—it's my first time attending. I'm—I uh, would say I'm a—I'm a small veteran blog. I've been doing it about a year, and kind of got thrown into it. And so now that I'm in love with it, and now that I'm getting to finally come to Blogger for the first time, I'm wondering your biggest number one tip for someone who's brand new, who's coming alone, 
um, who doesn't have trouble making friends, but just is kind of looking forward to it and wondering, you know, what your number one tip for somebody brand new like me. So, uh, so you say you don't have trouble making friends, so you're not particularly introverted. Is that right? No. <laughs> okay, Correct. Good. Well, good. That's excellent. Then I think for, for you, the number one tip would be a little planning, like checking out where you, what, what are the things you want to make sure not to miss and where you think you'll find your tribe. Even if you're not coming with bloggers, you already know, you probably have a, a subject matter you're really interested in or a group that you really feel a part of. And I would find, you know, where are those sessions that are around that? Where are the parties that are around that? I would go to the newbie breakfast. I would go to the speed dating. I would take all those opportunities because that way you start your conference off have met at least a couple dozen people in pretty close proximity through the breakfast and the speed dating. Um, so that would be my recommendation for someone who's generally comfortable. Um, for people who are not, if you don't mind, I will add on and just say for people who are a little more introverted, here is my number one tip. I, when I go to some other conference and I'm in a large group, I totally get that syndrome where I, um, you know, I don't want to be in the room. Like I want to escape to my room and order room service. Uh, I have two tactics, and yet at Blogger, I'm in the room constantly, and I'm talking to people constantly, and I'm, and, and, you know, I'm, I'm perfectly able to manage that. So there's two things. When I'm at someone else's conference, I always make myself get a, you know, Diet Coke or whatever, and, and look at my watch and say, you have to stay for 45 minutes. And if after 45 minutes, you didn't find a group to hang with, someone to connect with, someone to click with, you're allowed. But you got to give it 45 minutes. That's my role for myself. At Blogger, I figured out why it's so much easier for me to just stay there and work, you know, the party is because I feel like I'm the host and it's my responsibility to make other people feel comfortable. So my tactic I recommend to people is look for someone who looks like you feel inside and go try, go, go bring them out of their shell. Go try to make them feel like they're not alone. Um, uh, and that's really what works for me, which is that, you know, I'm one of those people I can't stand that, that feeling that someone is, is, is feeling alone, you know? And so if I, if I sort of take that approach that I'm the host and it's my job to, to make other people feel comfortable, it gives me, I guess, I don't know, the courage or it lets me forget myself a little bit. So those are, those are my tips for just, you know, in a big crowd, uh, getting along. Hi. <laughs> How are you? Uh oh. I'm great. How are you? Uh, can you hear me? I see you. Okay, but can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, I have three questions. <laughs> um, the first question. Ready. Are you ready? First question is about transportation. Can yeah. you enlarge on that at all? Sure. So. The conference like during the day. Sheraton. I, right. My my specific the question is during the day. Is will there be an ability to get back to the hotel? Like if you just totally become overwhelmed and you don't want to wait until five o'clock, and that's the most frequently asked question I've heard. Yes. So um, we've secured the coaches for the day. It's not just for the beginning of the day and the end of the day. So while the bulk of, of transportation will happen at the beginning of the day and the end of the day to go from the Sheraton to McCormick and back again, they're actually, they're not doing anything else. They're just going to probably be some in each place um, okay. to, to bring small groups back and forth. So yes, there will be ongoing transportation. And I just want to emphasize, those of you who are familiar with downtown Chicago and kind of freaking out about the traffic, you know, there's actually a route that's um, only four shuttle buses between uh, McCormick Place and the downtown hotels. So it's a nine minute ride and other cars and cabs and other transportation are not allowed on it. So it's a very straight shot and a very quick trip. And um, so it's we did decide to consolidate all the daytime programming to the McCormick just because we knew people were really uncomfortable with the, sh the shuttling back and forth and back and forth. Um, so when some, some new and more private space became available that we thought was appropriate for the tracks we had planned to have at Sheraton, we went ahead and moved. We just announced that last week. 
but the transportation will be ongoing. Okay. Second question <laughs> is, um, are you, is there going to be anything for a birds of a feather kind of thing? Oh, good question. You know, we're, I, I was just thinking about that this week because we've just jam-packed in so many things. I think that now that we're consolidating everyone to McCormick, we, we had allocated these big, long lunch periods to allow for travel back and forth. Well, now we don't need that. So I think now we'll be able to accommodate birds of a feather before one of the lunch keynotes. Great, because those are always great. I mean, that's how I met, you know, people my age, um, you know, the, the post-menopausal group, so to speak, <laughs> and uh, also Doctor Who fans <laughs> and things like that. So, yeah, so um, it's really important. I'm glad to hear that. Now, um, do you ever need uh, fill-ins at the last minute? for people who don't show or problems for, uh, you know, I'm wondering if you have a reserve speaker list. Um, speaker that's, speaker. That's, a, that's a great question in general about how to speak. I mean, we do a big call for ideas, and so that's how we get our first round of programming. And then we do the room of your own, which is how we get the second round of programming done. <clears throat> and then, you're right, Nancy, things happen. Um, <laughs> Things happen all the time. Every year, somebody, you know, from both things that are very unfortunate, like illness or deaths in the family, oh, to yeah. just, you know, yeah. one year we had, I forget, there was some horrible weather that kept half our spe Friday speakers from making it in time. So, you know, oh, okay. uh, as they say, stuff happens. Me, um, me. <laughs> <laughs> what I would always recommend, and this isn't just for our conference, this is for any conference, is yeah. the, the the best, what a lot of people do um, when they submit to speak is they, they do share why they're awesome, which is important, but it's general. It's like, I'm an expert in this and I'm awesome because I've done that and here's this, but, but they, then it's our job to figure out, well, how would we use that awesome person? You can actually, the yeah. most effective thing you do is say, this is a specific, if the programming isn't done yet, it's when you're submitting to speak, say, this is the specific topic, this is the takeaways we would cover. Here's some other people I think would be interested. Boom. I have done your job. I have created the panel. We don't all program panels exactly as submitted. We like to synthesize. Uh, we, we need diversity. We need a really broad panoply of people on our panels. And people submit the same, very similar ideas. So sometimes we're sort of putting people together. But when you've done that job, you've made it so much easier for me to say, oh. And then when, after a, pro a conference is programmed, it's really helpful yeah. to say, there's this panel, I'm perfect for it. If you have a something happen, here's why. <clears throat> and and again, don't say, I, I not that I'm saying you did say that, but I'm saying people do sometimes write and say, I would love, if anyone drops out, I'd love to speak. And we're like, great, <laughs> uh, that's yeah. not that helpful. It's here's the panel, right. I see this panel on your program, I understand you're done. But if anything happens, I would be a great substitute, and here's why. And you know what? Sometimes you actually still have a hole that you're wanting to fill. Even if you have three speakers, you kind of wanted a fourth. Um, so you might even be like, you know what? So would that be Mr. Lady? What? So do we contact Mr. Lady, or yeah, who so should Shannon we? Carroll. Yeah, Shannon okay. Carroll is the right person. Okay. Or you, it's programming at blogger.com gets to Shannon, Amelia, and me. So it's sort okay. of a good general uh, email. And there's no, I mean, sometimes that actually does happen and people get stuck in in the last couple of weeks because we need something. Yeah. And, um, and if you uh, spoon feed us where you would fit, it, it increases the okay. chances of that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that helps a lot. Thank you. Looking forward to my fifth, sixth, <laughs> I can't remember, vlogger. Awesome. I feel so bad for Joanna. Sorry, sorry, Joanna. Um, we, I thought we had you working there, but I think that there might still be a mic issue. If you want to give it one more shot, uh, maybe refresh your browser and come back in and then do the mic setting. Um, but we'll move on to the next uh, question in the meantime. So Abby is wondering, uh, Thursday versus Saturday night. Hi, I'm a first-timer. 
have to choose between Thursday night or Saturday night events. What do you recommend? Ooh, that's <laughs> tough. You know, all these events are my babies, right? It's like, who's my most beautiful child? I will tell you what's happening those two nights, and you can decide which you think is the most um, fitting for what you are interested in. So Thursday night is the official kickoff. Um, we start start with the evening at the expo, we open up the expo, all the sponsors have their best stuff, sort of, they, they're, a lot of the exhibitors do do drawings or other offerings that they, they save for that evening because it's when they're going to get everyone all at once, pretty much. Um, and then from the evening at the expo, we're going to go out on the concourse. We have the, sh the welcome reception, which we're calling the share and be shared reception. So we're going to have these uh, places where you can take pictures and print them and post them or pr even hopefully be able to print your favorite blog post and post it up there, share messages. And it's just going to it's going to stay there through the conference and, and hopefully grow this visual representation of what everyone's doing at the conference. Um, so it's, it's that concourse throughout the conference is going to be where hopefully we will all share and be shared. It is um, also sponsored. Uh, by Samsung, White Cloud, and Dodge, and they have a lot of cool activities planned and launching new things, and there's uh, there's cool stuff going on. And then we're going to take everyone back to the Sheraton for, I think it's seventh annual People's Party. Um, and the People's Party is a tradition, and Megan Jordan from Velveteen Mind, who's uh, the primary mastermind, um, her desire has always been to have a party that isn't about tribes, that isn't about specific niches. That's for um, both the tribes and the tribeless who want to connect. And it's really, you know, power to the people, everybody, anybody. Um, and so that's, uh, that's going to be back at the Sheraton. And that's sort of the late night that we'll close out with on Thursday. So very much about the, the expo um, and all the fun things there. And then very much about just connecting uh, with, with everybody. Saturday night is our fashion show. It's our second annual fashion show. We, I will tell you a little story. So we decided to do this last year because we had seen uh, an increasing interest in style and beauty blogging in our community. And I had a lot of people who were super skeptical about us doing a fashion show. They felt that wasn't really her to be about, to be about, I guess, looks and, you know, beauty and, and, um, and, and so I got a lot of kind of private pushback, you know, from people who, with whom I'm, I'm close. And, and um, we planned this fashion show to be about our entire community. We had run an initiative for over a year called Own Your Beauty, which was about every woman and every woman's beauty. And that's what we tried to represent, every kind of woman up there. Um, and, and none of them you know, professional models, and none of them had ever done really anything like this before. And um, it was just super moving. Like, I get a little teary when I think about it, because to see so many different women, first of all, so joyful, and so owning it, and, and really seeing it live and in person, the beauty of every woman. Um, all those naysayers came up to me afterwards, and, and even one of them said it was her favorite part of the conference. And you know, it's like the voices of the year set to music and with hot clothes. It's that kind of, you know, feeling of appreciating, um, you know, women and their voices and, and their beauty. Um, and after the fashion show, there will be the after party. And then you'll want to put on your dancing shoes and um, just have a lot of fun. And finally, Saturday night closes out with, again, it, it must be the seventh annual cheeseburger party. Um, which starts the community party in a, in a suite, getting shut down by security. And we're sort of going back to our roots, uh, you know, three years ago, uh, sorry, four years ago, it was in the presidential suite at the Sheraton and got shut down by security. And we're hoping to achieve exactly that goal uh, this year. It's, it's back up in the presidential suite. And it, it sort of involves lounging on beds and, and decompressing from the entire blogger experience. And, and yes, um, you know, eating cheeseburgers, including vegetarian burgers. Shout out to the vegans. So I don't know if that helps you make your choice, but I hope it does. Um, so many, so many things. It's, it's a difficult decision. 
so we're going to give uh, Joanna another try here in a minute. Uh, but before we do, we have a question, um, a text question here. Uh, and let me pull it up. Was the political activism uh, program a popular demand? Or do you do all add it to the program uh, because you feel like it is important uh, to have more women in elected office? So we've always actually had, since 2005, um, we've always had a track dedicated to politics, activism, social change, all of those kind of wrapped up some years. Now, last year, it was, it was very, it was an election year. So, you know, it was almost entirely politically oriented. Um, some years it's more social change and social good oriented. This year it's kind of a combo. So um, in addition to the the panel about um, running for office, and actually three years ago we did a we did a pre conference half day with the White House project, also about getting women to run for office. But we also have a panel about the educational system and how um, how we can work together. We have some uh, educators, administrators, parents, and um, moderated by Cynthia Liu who runs a site called k12nn.com which is all about trying to bring all these groups together to try and address educational issues and so that's in our politics and activism track this year um so it's sort of a combo there's some things that are um uh more about politics and there's some things that are more about activism um we believe that from the beginning when we created blog her we knew that women blogged under about every topic under the sun I run our research group, and um, I think it's really interesting to note that if you ask women what they blog about, and you give them five different topics, but you say you can only pick one, they will say my life. They don't. Women in general, the majority, don't want to be put in a box. Actually, we think of it quite holistically. Now, if you say, "Tell us what you blog about," choose as many as apply, then we'll choose three and four and five topics. But we see, we see everything in our life as working together. And that means that you don't have to be a political blogger to sometimes be talking about political things. Food can be political. Education can be political. Parenting can be political. Anything can be political. Um, and so we have always said that we wanted to talk about everything a woman talks about. And that includes technology. That includes politics. That includes a sports section on blog her. And we have the NFL as a sponsor this year. Woo, 49ers. Um, so uh, we are really about every topic. We didn't want to create, you know, a pink and purple silo on, on the web for women. Um, and that's what the conference represents as well. So, and it's even at our food conference. For those of you who've gone to our food conference, we always have a values track at our food conference, Blog Her Food, that talks about food justice and food policy and food politics. And you know, is it the majority of attendees who go to that track? You know, actually, no, that's okay. Um, but we will always serve the care about these issues and all these different things, career and tech and business and, you know, health and all, all the different uh, things that are out there. Um, and there should be a place for that online and there should be a place for that at our conference. So I hope that answers. All right, so we're going to bring Joanna up, and she's also texted me her question, so if we can't get it working, I'll just read it out for her. Uh, so come right up. Oh. Hi. It's I working. Can you. Yeah. First of all, I just want to say you're fantastic. I love this presentation. Uh, I wish I brushed my hair, but I didn't. Um, I, so my question is kind of specific. Um, I'm one of the voices of the year, the humor. I'm really excited. Um, I have no idea what to expect at that event. Uh, so I'm, you know, running around like a crazy person. Um, also, my submission was a video. So what, I don't, do I have to bring my computer and show it? Or will there be some sort of a presentational thing? Um, yeah, that's it. That's pretty much it. What's going to happen? Okay, so the voices of the year is 100 voices of the year. 12 of the voices of the year will do their readings. The other voices of the year who are in attendance, and not everybody can attend, but for those who are, um, they during the community keynote, they'll have reserved seating up front, and then we'll bring you all up on stage and take a picture of everybody. 
but it's during the reception afterwards that we will have, if it's um, a blog post, we're going to have big blow up printouts of the blog posts so people can read them. What we did last year and la last couple of years for the visual and video oriented um, um, honorees is we had them uh, projecting. Um, so I don't know how, how I don't know specifically um, how important the audio is because obviously during certain portions of it, no one's going to hear the audio. There's too much, you know, hubbub. But we had all the visuals projecting in the main session room, like before the community keynote actually started. Um, they were just on a rotating um, a spinner, basically showing all the awarded visuals and videos. And then so we'll have monitors out in the section of the party where we're honoring the honorees. We'll also have monitors there, those that, to your point, are, um, are visuals or video. Mm. Is there, I wonder if there's any have one where people could actually, well, mine's like a three minute, you know, humor video. So definitely the audience. That's a really good question. I would suggest is email, um, uh, email Lori, L-O-R-I, at blogger.com. She's our head of event operations, and she's um, uh, in charge of the details of how we're honoring all the different voices. So I right. think that um, she's the right person. You can CC me, Elisa, at blogger.com, so right. that I'll remember to check in myself. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you very much. I'm excited. All right, so we're just about out of time. Uh, we have a, one last quick question here. Uh, when arriving, do we register at McCormick or Sheraton when we check in? That's a great question. Um, so if you're attending one of the pre-conference days, those are actually happening at the Sheraton, and you'll check in for those at the Sheraton. Registration for the um, main conference is at McCormick. So ask I do not know the answer yet about, well, if you haven't picked up your badge yet, are you allowed on the bus to get to McCormick to get your badge? And I realized that I didn't actually have the answer to that little logistical problem. Also, the problem of, hey, if you don't make it to the evening at the expo or, or the share and be shared welcome reception, how do you get into the people's party? So uh, the good thing about our system that we have is that we have, we have it all, um, you know, it's all in a system and then we actually print badges on site as opposed to pre-printing them now uh, because it can be quicker with this system. So uh, I think uh, I think we need to write a post about exactly what's going to happen because I think there are a few use cases where I don't actually know what our plan is. In general, it's picking them up at the McCormick place, but I know there will be situations where someone's going to be at the Sheraton and want to get into something. Um, and there's that question about the buses. So I'm sorry. I, I Thanks for stumping me at the very end, man. <laughs> I will get you the answer. So I think we have time for one more, and Sandra wanted to give it another try. So let's cross our fingers and hope uh, Sandra can can come up here and, and get her audio to work like. Uh, I'm. Can you hear me? Oh, there I am. Okay, first of all, I must apologize. I had no idea you were going to see me. I have no lipstick on. I'm still in my bathrobe, and you, my eyebrows aren't here. Nothing. Um, so, uh, my, I guess my first thing is me to either. thank you. Be, thank you because I'm one of the VO VOTYs, and I didn't even know anything Voices about it. Here. Yes, and I didn't even know about it when I was, you know. Thank you. It's it's an incredible honor, and I still get I still get chills when I think about it. As a gray-haired blogger and a first-time blogger. It's very very I'm very excited. And as a newbie blogger and a newbie, I've never been to a conference before. What do which track do you suggest I even go on? It's all so overwhelming. So I think um, it's really helpful to think about what what is your goal for the conference? Is it to get better at certain skills? And if you're a newbie blogger, do you go to the beginning technical track or the beginning monetization track if you're interested in monetizing? You know, um, is it about connecting and conversation? There are some tracks where it's definitely more about 
conversations and the audience gets very pulled into the conversations and it's a little less about workshops and hands-on. So, you know, there's a boomer panel uh, in the interest and identity track or other, other sorts of panels that are designed more for um, interesting conversation and connection with people of like mind or, or like interests. Um, and can you, if from, it's, can you switch from one track to another? Yeah, totally. Yeah, you so can if hop you around on back. writing, you can go to yeah. identity or. Yeah, so the writing track is a whole other, you know, or you can have in the bar and just have hands on kind of talking to people. Um, but yes, you other than the Thursday pre conference days where, you know, if you buy Healthminder, you're supposed to stay in Healthminder and so on and so forth. For Friday and Saturday, we in fact encourage people to vote with their feet that if you go into a panel, you know, we acknowledge that the most important thing when you're writing panel descriptions is that you, when you're organizing um, the panels, you know, it needs to, it needs to bring to life what you described in words. Um, and we try really hard with our descriptions to do that, but it doesn't always work. You know, people have different contexts. Um, it's subjective. So in a you thought I thought this was going to be about something totally different. This sucks. Get up, leave, go find something else. You are not married to a panel because you walked in. Nobody, you know, if we can all not be offended because everybody has their heads down and their mobile devices now instead of watching the speakers, we can all not be offended if a couple people get up and try to find some other panel that better suits their needs. So it's about it's about suiting your needs. You're not there to serve the speakers. The speakers are really there to serve you. Um, I used to, this is a totally random anecdote, but I used to be in theater and I always used to get really bugged. People would sometimes come backstage at intermission and say, oh, this is a terrible audience. They're reacting. And I'd be like, who's the one who paid the money to see who here? Like, it's not their job to make us feel good about ourselves. <laughs> you know, it's our job uh, to communicate and entertain. And it's the same with the programming. Vote with your feet and find what works for you and try a variety of things. And maybe it'll take you, you know, a little bit to figure out. But to your point, there's so much going on. Um, so, and look at the people, the speakers, and just see, maybe you just see someone who seems to be, I always recommend actually go see one panel that just is nothing you're interested in and is nothing you ever thought about before. I always, I recommend this for South by Southwest attendees too, which is so massive. Just go see something that's totally off your beaten path because it will just get your brain thinking in a different way. And it's always, it's always really surprising and interesting. Thank you. That was really very helpful. I never would have thought of that. So I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. I'm very excited. And I can't have to find the right outfit for the, um, you know, being honored. My God, it's making me crazy. <laughs> well, I look forward to meeting you. Thank you. Me too, you. Thank you again for the opportunity. I really appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, everyone. I think that brings us to our time here. Do you want to uh, close us out with a few parting words? Oh, thank you, Tom. Well, first of all, thanks, Tom, uh, for helping us figure out this platform. Thanks to Shindig for hosting us. And I thought I would be, I would love any of you to email me, elisa at blogger.com, and let me know what you thought of it. Um, I thought it was really interesting and fun to see. I wish more of you had, I could see more of your faces. I don't know why that is. I see some of you fit your faces, but not everybody. Um, I, so uh, thank you. And thanks to all of you who came. Uh, I was really afraid I was going to be in, like, talking to myself. I was, I was DM some of my buddies saying, don't let me be lonely. Um, so I'm really happy you all came. Uh, for those of you who are already coming, thank you so much. And I really look forward to seeing you. For those of you who are considering it, I hope you'll give it a shot. Um, and I hope you'll tell your your fellow friends and bloggers to come and join you there. Uh, there are there are still tickets available for you know every portion of the conference. We have a ton of capacity and room to breathe at uh, McCormick Place, which makes it great. Um, for those of you from the early days, know that we used to have to like shut down our registration because we were constrained by hotel capacity, and and we sort of evaded that issue. So um, really, my only parting words are I, I really look forward to seeing you all in Chicago. And it's like in two weeks, uh, which is amazing. So um, thanks for joining me here. And we'll see you in two weeks.